Hi, my name is Phil Conway with Rose and Associates. I'm here to introduce you to Rose RA, a new prospect assessment tool named in recognition of our founder, Peter Rose. So we've just opened the program, and on the left hand side, we can see a top to bottom workflow. And we're here on the setup screen where we can see several dialog boxes. On the left, the prospect details, we provide the prospect name, and to the right, where we have to select the prospect units and also the input distribution options and how those are displayed to us. If we focus on the central part of the screen that define zones, these are the five zones that are present in this particular prospect. Let's look at a schematic of that, and we can see those five zones spread over three fold blocks and two stratigraphic levels, the Frio and the Wilcox. And in this particular model, we also want to capture the resources chance associated with a well that's targeting two of those fault blocks. Rose RA enables us to model all five zones, the aggregate of the five zones, and then the aggregate of the prospect fault blocks and the stratigraphic levels and the well all in the same file. Let's just return to Rose RA and see how we can do that. So for this particular case, we're just going to toggle off um, everything except those zones that are in the central fault block. So we've got the Wilcox and the Frio, and those are the two zones that we're just going to look at in this demonstration case. Next, I want to go to the prospect text input, and this is where I select the information that pertains to the descriptors related to this particular prospect. All this can be defined by your company, including the drop downs and descriptors, and we've also got uh, notes fields on every input as well, just to dis on every input card to capture additional text information that we might want saved with the prospect. We need to identify which products we're going to model. So we can see we're selecting the oil with some solution gas from the Frio prospect and just oil from the Wilcox. On the zone level, we now need to provide some text detail related to each of the zones. So whether this is a pre-drill, there's any DHI present and any other information that we might want to capture. Um, you'll notice that the cards, as we call them, are colored, and this was on the setup screen. Rose RA assigns a color to each of the zones, and that stays with that particular zone all the way through the inputs and all the results, which makes it very easy to identify which zone it is that you're looking at. Let's, let's look at the rock volume page, and if I scroll out for a second, we can see that both of the zones are actually present in the same window which makes it very easy just to work my way from left to right and cross-check my inputs across different zones. So let's just go back to the full view where we're now looking just at the Frio top zone. At the top here, we need to select the estimating methods we're going to use. And for this particular case, we're doing the area versus depth with a top surface only. And we've got to decide how we want to model the water contacts and we've selected the column height option. I then cut and paste my area depth pairs into the table on the left. That generates the chart on the right. And the oil water contact comes from our input of the column height. So this is the where I can input my input distributions. And the fields that have green in the background are things that I input. And then the text with the white background are things that Rose RA calculates. Very easy to select from different distributions, all of which you can control at the corporate configuration level. And it's easy to make inputs deterministic just by checking the dice button, and that locks it to the value on the left-hand side. I've also got the option to set uh, correlations. And so if we look at the potential correlations I can set, use the slider to define a correlation factor, commit that, and now we can see to the right of those distributions, we can see the green backwards forwards arrow indicating that there's a distribution present. I can also chart the input distributions and see any spiking that might be present in the distribution input on the charts. So let's proceed downward. Below, we have an intermediate simulation output, which provides some charts just to make sure that the calculated net rock volume is in line with our expectations. So if I toggle off, I can just now see my net rock volume displayed on the log probit chart. 
it is possible to look at other data as well, such as the inputs. So I could just look at my productive area, and if I don't like the logarithmic scale, I could easily change that to be, to be linear, and that will update the chart below. We also have a rock volume tornado chart. So this is what's driving the uncertainty in my estimates of the net rock volume. If I click on those charts, it reports the P10, P90 ratio associated with those inputs. And I can also see a rock volume histogram chart, again, where I can control what data is actually displayed on the, um, on the charts themselves. Let's proceed to the oil and gas yields. And this again follows very much the same workflow where I have my Frio top zone on the left hand side and my Wilcox central zone uh, to the right hand side. And you can see that we've got uh, many of the same different options in terms of being able to input correlations between the parameters that it's appropriate for. And we input the values and it generates a mini simulation below to make sure that those values are in line with our expectations. If we proceed to the zone chance inputs, we can see that we've calculated the chance of geologic success for each of those particular zones. I scroll to the right, and the chance matrix is fully customizable by your company to include whatever components and subcomponents you want. I want to model the potential for some dependency and we've got various options here. In this particular case, we're selecting to use the variable conditional dependence at the zone chance component level, which enables to model dependency on each of the different chance components themselves. So here we've set that there's full, they are fully dependent for source and time, timing and migration. They have no dependency or they're independent for the reservoir. And we have full dependence between closure and containment although we can actually see that they are 100% chance of success. So that really is not having any impact. But as we move the slider backwards and forwards, we can see the impact of shared chance on the calculated chance of success reported below on the product line. Let's proceed to looking at the stratigraphic level text input. And here, if we want to, we can enroll the zones into each of their stratigraphic levels as we've done here. And that will output the aggregate chance of success and resources at the stratigraphic level for the Frio and the Wilcox. We're not too interested in that in this particular analysis, because if you remember, we're just looking at the central fault block. So I'm just going to toggle those off and now it will not calculate the aggregate. What we do want to do, however, is to calculate the aggregate resources for the central fault block. And you can see here I've selected the Frio top and the Wilcox central to be present in the central fault block aggregate zone level. I have toggled off the other zones so they will not calculate the uh, aggregate resources for the other fault blocks. I can put in some commercial thresholds if I want to. I can do this both at the prospect and at the zone level. And we can also capture those resources associated with any wells, the aggregate resources associated with the well targeting multiple zones. Again, we're not doing that in this particular analysis, so I'm just going to toggle it off. We're now ready to run the prospect. And I'm running 5,000 uh, trials. I have enabled my correlations. And we will shortly inspect the results associated with the, with the uh, central fault block. So my results uh, dashboard includes uh, several summary charts. We've got a histogram. I scroll down, there are other types of charts that we can look at. One chart that's quite useful is the scattered charts, which enables us to plot uh, variables against each other. Uh, so if I just look at my rock volume versus my area, and that's the chart that I wanted to see, so I can commit that. And now that's presented to me in the summary charts. To the right of the scatter chart, we can also see a stack cumulative bar chart, which shows the contribution of resources by each of the zones and the probability associated with them. 
So we can see only very occasionally does the Wilcox appear without the, the Frio, and the Frio resources certainly dominate the overall resources associated with this particular prospect. We've got several other outputs, including the input output table. And here we can actually dissect the results or filter the results to show only that data that we want to see. Here we're looking at the prospect aggregate, but I can in fact just look at the individual zone results. So if I just want to see the, the resources associated with the Frio only, I can look at those here. My in-place recoverable, total recoverable are all reported. Any secondary products are also provided to me here, and it's giving me the formula for how those secondary products might be calculated below when I hover my mouse cursor over that particular output. It reports the uh, chance of geologic success, the uh, implied shared chance of success, any conditional, any conditional given shared success, and the probability of exceeding a threshold is also reported. And I can, in fact, get back down to the input distributions that were used as well to uh, calculate the resources associated with this particular zone. All of this could be exported to Excel. And if I want to look at the resource, the uh, outputs associated with the prospect segment, I just select that one that we want to look at. We only run it for the central fob block. So these are the resources and chance of success associated with that uh, fault block presented below. And again, this can all be output to Excel. We have an abundance of uh, tornado charts associated with the outputs for both of the zones, including the net rot volume, the yield outputs, oil in place, the geologic UR as well. We have uh, various decision trees. We can again select the decision tree that we want to look at, and we can also look at the commercial decision tree as well. Finally, we can inspect the trial data table, and this includes all 5,000 trials for all the inputs and all the results. And again, this can be filtered. So if we just want to look at, at the zone level, the resources associated with the Frio, that's very easy to do. We can sort on this table just by double clicking on any of the columns and we can show all the columns which includes all that input data as well that goes down to all the individual uh, net rock volume and yield inputs. It's possible to filter on this uh, table. So let's just say we want to look at a 10 percentile window around the P50. We can very easily do that. And now I can see I've got 512 trials that fit that criteria out of the 5,000. And I could now, if I want to export all that to Excel. That is a very rapid walkthrough of Rose RA. There are several other uh, videos on this website, including how to set the corporate configuration of Rose RA to conform to your best practices. We can also import from MMRA into Rose RA, and there's another video demonstrating that. If you've got any other questions, uh, please contact uh, David Cook or I. Uh, David is a partner and software manager at Rosen Associates, and we'd be pleased to provide you a trial copy or answer any questions that you might have. Uh, please go to the website and get in touch. Thank you very much for your attention. Let us know how we can help. Thanks. Bye.